hey listen, I take a lot of pictures with my pinhole camera. Now people ask me then, every now and then, that how do I get so sharp and punchy pictures with my pinhole camera? And that they struggle in getting those kind of results. So, yeah, if you want to get pictures like I'm getting, I thought I'll try to explain to you what are my tricks. Now, before we go there, we need to understand some of the basic fundamentals of a pinhole camera and pinhole, pinhole photography before we can go into my tricks. Now, a pinhole camera is an extremely simple device. It doesn't have a lens. It's basically a box with a really tiny hole in it and then film or digital sensor. And then we squeeze the light through this really tiny hole so that it lands on the film. So basically, let's say you have a subject there that you want to photograph. And that subject radiates light. That's what photography is all about. We try to capture the radiating light from the whatever we are photographing. And now there's a say a little detail in your subject, and that detail radiates light. So now when the light comes to your camera, we squeeze it through this really tiny hole so that that radiation lands on this film in only one particular spot, creating a replica of that detail on your film, therefore creating a photograph. And if we would follow that idea through, then we could say that the smaller the hole is in your pinhole camera, the more accurately we can control that that light ray from that detail lands only in one particular spot on your film and therefore you would get really sharp images. Now, but people didn't get sharp images when they started to create camera obscuras a long time ago and then pinhole cameras and they didn't really understand why that is the case because it needed quantum physics to explain why your pinhole camera picture can never be crystal sharp. So first of all, a bit over 100 years ago, uh, scientists understood that light is not rays. It's not consisting of rays. Instead, it consists of particles and waves. It has these dual characteristics. And now if you think about the light coming as a wave, with a different wavelength depending on the color of your light, if the hole is too small, it starts to interfere with the wave going up and down. So that's the first thing that creates the need to make the hole bigger so that it doesn't interfere with the wave and the bigger hole means that the picture is going to be fuzzier. Then there is another physical phenomena that is really counterintuitive. That, that light particle, now we are talking about the particle characteristics of light, when it lands through this spin hole on your film, we cannot exactly know where it goes. We can only talk about probabilities where it goes. And a scientist named Heisenberg created this Heisenberg uncertainty principle, which says that First of all, we cannot measure the position and the direction of the particle at the same time and that we can accurately measure them, they will always be probabilities. It's most probably going to be where we want it to be, but every now and then it's not. Bear with me, I find this fascinating, even though maybe for some of you now I'm getting too deep, but hey, this is how I think about the world. So Heisenberg then created what is called a Heisenberg uncertainty principle as a mathematical formula like this. The formula says delta x times delta p is greater or equal than h bar divided by 2. Now let's first talk about the right hand side of this e equation. h is this, this interesting number in the universe, fascinating number called Planck's constant. 
that is a really small number and it keeps on repeating itself in the universe over and over again. It defines a lot of properties of the universe. Now in this formula, as we put the bar on it, it means that it's divided by 2 times pi. And then that is divided by 2. Now, what is important about the right hand side of the formula is that it's always a positive number. It can never be 0, it's always a positive number. And now we have a multi multi multiplication at the left hand side of the formula, delta x times delta p, which means that neither of them can be 0. Because if either delta x was 0 or delta p was 0, then this formula wouldn't work anymore because the left hand side would be 0 and the right hand side would be a positive number. So, what does delta x mean? Delta x means that it says the probability, it defines the probability where the particle, light particle, is on your film plane. And if we would know exactly where it is, if that was possible in the universe, then delta x would be zero. But then this formula wouldn't work anymore because the left hand side would be zero. Now the p then defines the direction of the particle that it takes. Does it even come close to our camera or does it go to the other direction? That once again is the probability and if we would know exactly that it comes through this pinhole, then it would be zero and once again this formula wouldn't work. So in both cases, where the particle lands and what's its direction from the original source, we can only talk about probabilities. What does it mean that we can only talk about probabilities? It means that because the very basic laws of this universe, we cannot accurately say that the light lands on a predefined space or position on our field. Therefore, every now and then the light particle goes somewhere else where it shouldn't go. And that creates fuzziness in our pictures. <laughs> hey, I truly apologize. But this is me. There's nothing I can do about it. When I go and want to do something like pinhole photography, I want to understand what I'm dealing with. I built my own cameras, not only pinhole cameras, but other cameras, just to understand what photography is all about. And it fascinates me to understand, and it interests me to understand it all the way to the nitty gritty details, for me to then utilize it. So here we go. We have now established that we are fighting the laws of physics. So there's very little we can do about that. So then people ask me, do I have some kind of a special camera to get the pictures I get. They ask me about the pinhole, what size and how did you get, you know, build your pinhole and is it laser cut and, and all those kind of things. Uh, I don't know if that really matters. I've built a lot of pinhole cameras myself and I, oh, I just do the pinholes from tin foil, put a piece of tin foil against my fingertip and then take a needle and carefully pierce through the tin foil, just enough to feel it going through on my fingertip. Don't push it through all the way, but just enough to feel it piercing it through. And then that seems to create a perfect pin uh, hole for all my, my cameras. So it's not about the precision as long as it's in the right ballpark. And also the physics suggests that, that you can't get it right, <laughs> because we are fighting the laws of physics. What is more important is the size of the negative, and I only shoot a large format. If you get a small negative size, 35mm, or if you are shooting digital with a small sensor, even if you have a full size or you know, medium format sensor that's still tiny compared to large format, then you need to enlarge your picture more. And then you are also enlarging all the fuzziness. So my Maybe the only trick with the device is to get as large a negative size as possible. So it's not that I can fight the laws of physics and it's not about the camera other than trying to find a large negative size. My trick is somewhere else. Now it all is about the appearance, about pretending that my pictures are sharp, creating an illusion of sharpness. Hear me out. Pinhole photography is all about illusion. 
And it boils down to composition. Composition is, all, is the only thing that matters, not your camera. Here are my rules for composing pictures with a pinhole camera that look sharp and punchy. Rule number one, always photograph bold and well-defined objects. Your object or subjects, whatever you call them, they need to have clear lines, bold shapes, strong positions. Then they give an impression of being sharp when you photograph them. You can't photograph details. You need to photograph bold, strong things. That's number one. Number two is that forget about gray areas in the middle. If you are shooting black and white film and you are into the zone theory, it's, I'm, I'm not sure if you should. But anyways, if you are, forget about anything between say three and seven. That's just noise in your pinhole pictures. You only need to pay attention to really bright and really dark parts of the pitch. Because once again, they give you an impression of sharpness because they are punchy. And everything gray in between, it's soft and it increases the appearance of softness of your pictures. I keep on reminding yourself, yourself and myself that pinhole photography is all about faking it to be sharp. If sharp images is what you want to create, Ah, yeah, maybe it's good to, good to have a break here and say that maybe you don't want to create kind of pinhole pictures I do and then forget about all these rules. Embrace the fuzziness and create fuzzy pictures and that's a perfect strategy. But then they are different kind of pictures than mine. So, um, two rules already. Bold, strong object with clear lines. The second was highlights and lowlights, nothing else matters. Number three. Create tight compositions. Compositions where your subject fills in the whole space. Uh, if you have a lot of negative space and if you have a lot of uh, things that are not really important, that adds the impression of unsharpness into your pictures. And this is all about the impression. When you compose your pictures, get really close or, or photograph something that is huge and fills up your entire space. And then number four, which is kind of, an, kind of a trick and maybe not that as important as those previous. But, you know, there's a special characteristics in a, in a pinhole picture, which is that the aperture is extremely... The aperture number, F number, is extremely large because the hole is so small. It's in the ballpark of F150, which means that everything is in focus from one centimeter to the infinity. And you can use that, creating really this incredible depth of field that you can't do with any other camera, to draw the viewer's attention to that phenomena. Having everything in focus creates an impression of the picture being in focus. So this is all about faking and creating the impression of, of being focused. Now, here then is an interesting side effect of pinhole photography. It has taught me more about photography than any other device or any other field of photography. Because it is so primitive, because it forces you to think about highlights, lowlights, composition, boldness, fuzziness, laws of physics, all those things. You need to understand them before you can create a pinhole of, uh, photograph. And then you can apply them elsewhere the way you want with, with slightly different tools. But you know, I've learned so much taking pinhole photographs. The other way around it does not work. You can't take your sharp Canon camera and then go pinholing with the same state of mind. You will be disappointed. You need to forget everything you've done with your lens-based photography when you start to photograph with your pinhole. But then you can take your pinhole learnings to your lens-based photography and expand from there. That's fascinating. Now, since you asked my opinion, let me, before we end, let me, let me 
this is controversial now this is a very strong opinion but it's a little bit of a response to some of the pictures I've seen now if you want to create pinhole photographs the way I do do not photograph forests or leaves <laughs> this is a funny a bit funny advice but I've seen a lot of people showing their forest pictures and asking me why does my pinhole picture look like this it does because you are photographing forests don't do that it's a good example of a subject that is fascinating to photograph with the sharp lens all the nuances all the shades of the leaves and the forest are a fascinating subjects but with the pinhole camera, they are all just a total mess. You need to find subjects that are bold. You need to forget about the grays. And that's all forests. Pinhole photography is not about shades. It's about shapes. <laughs> and on that... It's good to end. Hey, thank, uh, thank you for watching and I apologize once again my preachy rant. I'm a son of a preacher man, so there's nothing I can do about it. Thanks for watching. Next time something else. Mm -hmm.